At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. You lose! Good day, sir! Welcome to Chem Mistakes. Here I'm going to go through a couple of student responses. Uh, this one we're going to look at actual chemical reactions being written out. We're going to try and break down why the student put what they put, what they were thinking, and how to improve their thinking in order to get the right answer the next time. So here we're looking at oxides being added to water. Now there's two types of oxides that we deal with typically. If we have a non-metal paired up with oxygen, we have a non-metal oxide. And when we add those to water, we're going to end up producing an acid. Okay. Uh, so carbon, not a metal, carbon dioxide plus water, we're going to produce some kind of acid. So here in the first student, what they've done is they've taken CO2 plus water as they were gotten. So carbon dioxide is bubbled through water and they wrote the reactants down. And then they just put everything together into one giant thing. They probably went with OH here as a hydroxide. And then they went with a four so that it would balance the charge of the carbon. Now, it turns out that when you're actually bonding carbon to OH, that actually forms what's called an alcohol, uh, where it's not really a charged species. And so this is not an analysis you want to do. Now, if you're ending with a metal and a non-metal, where you're talking sodium and chlorine, and you're putting those together, you're going to form an ionic compound. When you get to the middle of the table, some of that starts to disappear because their electronegativities are so similar, you don't see electron transfer going on. So this is not what we'd like to come up with for this answer. But after that, they went through and they balanced it. So they have a rough understanding of the idea that they're going to put these two things together and then balance the equation. However, what the person is missing is they want to know that they're going to form an acid. So when we form an acid, generally we're going to have a hydrogen in the front of the compound. And we're going to write that in a way where we can kind of show the acidic hydrogens. Now, an acid is something that can give away an H plus to something else. And the stronger it is, the better it is at releasing that H plus. So when we write the formula of these, we're going to look for something where we have a hydrogen in front that we can remove from the whole thing. Now in the second reaction, we see that. We have HCO3, where we have our hydrogen in front. However, the problem with this is, is that we look and we see that there's a CO2 and an H2O, and yet there's only one hydrogen here. And if we go to start trying to balance this by putting a 2 here, we end up having to put a 2 here. And if we go back and forth, you'll quickly find that that is not going to balance out. And if you look a little closer at this structure here, HCO3, you'll find that this actually doesn't make sense if you go to draw a Lewis structure for it. So what we should think of here is even though we're looking at an acid, you can think of an acid correlating a little bit to ionic compounds. So you can think of the hydrogen as having a plus one charge and the CO3 is having a two minus charge, much like the carbonate ion. And so what we can do is we can say, okay, in order to balance charge here, we're gonna need two of these hydrogens. CO2 plus H2O yields H2CO3. Now in this case, we end up, when we look at the balance, we have H2 here, we have three oxygens and three oxygens, and we have one carbon and one carbon. So you can see this balance is very easily. So it turns out that when you put a non-metal oxide into water, they're all going to balance relatively simply. And if you're having a struggle balancing them, it probably means that you're not writing it out correctly. Another example of this is if we were to take SO2 and H2O, there are two different acids possible to form. One is H2SO4, the other is H2SO3. Okay. Now for this particular reaction type, if you look at the balancing on H2SO4 with this, you're going to find that it's literally impossible to balance. However, if you look at this, you'll note that it's already balanced. It's a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio. And so therefore, that's going to be your product, because in this particular reaction, what we're really doing is we're, we're mixing the two, and they're forming an interaction between the two chemicals in a really simple, balanced fashion. There's not a huge set of rearrangements going on here, like in some other reactions where you have these coefficients going on. This is a single or maybe a couple step reaction, and so therefore we see a very simple balancing uh, result from the whole thing. Okay. Now, second question, calcium oxide is added to water. So here we're looking at a metallic oxide or a metal oxide because calcium is a metal. So not that it's metallic when it's in its oxide form, but originally as an element, calcium is a metal. So when we have a metal oxide plus water, then we're going to form a base 
which usually means that we're going to have something with hydroxide in it. Okay, and the metal is probably going to be the thing with it. So here we have two responses from students, calcium oxide plus water makes CaOH2. The problem with this student is they're writing CaOH2 like this, and what they should be doing is they should be writing it like this. Because the hydroxide is a singular unit, you're treating these two atoms with a net charge as one thing. And so we have this hydroxide with a negative charge, which is two atoms. But this, these two atoms are very stable together, and so therefore we're going to see them kind of retain their structure throughout this whole process. So this over here is showing two hydrogens, but only a singular oxygen. And so we want to put parentheses around it to say we have two of these groups rather than two of the hydrogens, but the two doesn't apply to the oxygen. Okay. The second reaction here, we have calcium oxide plus water makes calcium oxide plus hydrogen. And the assumption here I'm making is that they intended to put calcium hydroxide. But why did they put the hydrogen? Well, it turns out that there's two very similar reactions that they're being confused with here. If you add a reactive metal plus water, you will make the base plus hydrogen gas. And if you've ever seen a reaction like sodium in water, you've seen a big explosion, that's the hydrogen gas exploding. You see the pink color, that's from the base forming in the presence of phenolphthalein. So the metal plus water is a different reaction than the metal oxide plus water. And in this case, we go ahead and we just form the base, which will then form a pink solution if we have phenolphthalein present, uh, but we're not producing any hydrogen gas. Okay. And if you get into higher levels, you can see that this is actually a redox reaction occurring, whereas this is not. This is maintaining its oxidation states for everything. So in this, I'm actually losing electrons from the calcium to the hydrogen, allowing this to form and the explosiveness goes on. In this, the calcium has kind of already reacted, so to speak. And so then I'm just seeing a transfer of hydrogen from the water over to the calcium oxide to form calcium hydroxide. Okay, a simple wrong would have done just fine, but... Uh...